Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, as usual, uh, if you could hit the subscribe button right here. Um, I'd appreciate it. When this is over, give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you hate it, just don't give me a thumbs up, but don't give me a thumbs down. I've had a few thumbs down and it like breaks my heart. So anyways, um, thanks so much for being patient and everything like that for me not putting out um, a normal tutorial good video for a little bit. I've been preparing for my craft fair. Craft fair was supposed to be today. Uh, we had a tornado rip through last night. Um, our house is okay. We're whole. That's all that matters. There's a lot of damage around us. Um, the dogs were not happy. <laughs> you know, they, they hate uh, rain and that kind of thing. So um, storms really bothered them. They're actually with their dad right now. They're with Terry. Um, so um, out in the family room or in his office one. I think probably in his office because I don't hear the TV going. But anyways, um, thanks for being patient. I'm really bummed about the craft fair. It was I enjoy craft fairs so much. Um, it was an opportunity to move some product, make some money so I can play more in my sewing room. Um, but this ensures that my next two I will have plenty of um, that I'm still going to keep making product. Please understand that I'm not in any way, shape, or form going to sit on my laurels and not do anything. I've got a couple more ideas for some good stuff. The tote bags I make, I do have a really great pattern for a smaller tote for a medium size, so I'll be making some of those. But anyways, today's tutorial is a bowl koozie, bowl cozy, whatever you want to call them, koozie, cozy, whatever. It looks like, like this. How cool is it? I think it's so cute. Yeah, cute little bacon and eggs, that kind of thing. You just take your bowl, put it in it, hold it in case it's hot. Ooh, it's so hot. Whatever. <laughs> so anyways, this is just what it looks like, a little bowl koozie. Um, super fun to make. This, however, I will say is not a true beginner sewer project. There's a, quite a few things that are a little wonky, couple pleats, that kind of thing. A little difficult to get through. Here comes Gypsy. Hi, Deb. She's coming to help me. Can't do anything in here without her. Let me tell you that right now. She's my girl. Um, but having said that, um, thanks so much for just being patient. Thanks so much for being you guys. I am eternally grateful for how great you guys are. Um, I, I have some really great followers. It makes me very happy. Um, it's just a good thing. I, I enjoy you guys very much. I enjoy the comments. I love getting comments. I love answering them back. I just love reading them. They're so much fun. So if you could leave me a comment below, greatly appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up. So let's get started. Let's go straight to the uh, tutorial and go from there. Thanks guys. Bye. Hey guys, today we are going to be making bowl cozies, cozies, bowl cozies, bowl cozies. There's a thousand different ways to say it. Okay, that's not true. Not a thousand. Sorry, I got to put my hair back up. Um, maybe two. <laughs> there might be a third that I haven't heard before, but that's you know essentially what it's called. Um, we're going to be making it with this cute. If I can get it to focus, it's bacon and eggs. Okay, so when I make bowl cozies, I like to make them with food fabric. Pipples and coffee, y'all. Pipples and coffee. <laughs> uh, two of my favorite things, in all honesty. So anyways, um, squirrel. Squirrel, 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 squirrel. This girl is squirrely, I'm telling you right now. Um, so anyways, I like to make them with food type stuff. Uh, cute food fabrics like this. Serious ones, like, I call them serious. They're not really serious, but. You know, stuff like this. Stuff with hot sauces on it or just the words like, I have one that's got different types of um, beer, like IPA, lager, da, 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 all that good stuff. So we're gonna make it with this today. So there's a couple of things you're gonna need. You're gonna need two 10 inch squares of fabric, 10 inch all the way around. Um, fabric and, ten, and two 10 inch uh, squares of interfacing. I use Thermaland Plus um, and I use an adhesive spray to get them to stick together. I just love Thermaland Plus. It's, it's a very good product. So what we're going to do, starting first off, we're going to sew a giant X. Okay, let me get you zoomed in over here so you can see what I'm doing. 
I asked my husband if he wouldn't mind um, videoing for me. As my sister and I say, camera-ing. Um, if he wouldn't mind and he found me a tripod. <laughs> I don't blame him. It can get kind of boring sometimes. You guys know that. So both of them, we're going to just do a giant X. All right. So let's get started on that part. And as I get started, I realize that my sewing machine has become unthreaded, dethreaded. Now this machine does have, <laughs> threaded it wrong you guys, I'm telling you. Um, this machine does have an automatic threader. I do not like to use it. It takes a very long time and it breaks very easily so I just choose not to use it. I can thread it, the machine, faster manually than it can with the automatic threader. So let's see. And I just did it again. Alrighty, let's get this started. It's just sewing two large X's all the way down diagonally on making a giant X on each 10 inch square of fabric that has the 10 inch square of interfacing attached to it. All right, there we go. I, I am gonna interrupt this and tell you that my machine is super screwy right now. I don't know what's going on with it. Um, so I may have to kind of play with it during this tutorial and I apologize. One diagonal on the first one. Second diagonal on the first one. Start the second one. First diagonal on the second. Sugar plums. It goes again. I really don't know what's going on. My bobbin keeps messing up really bad. I just don't know what's going on with it. It's very frustrating. I might have to get my um, my other machine out. I have a. This one is a Juki TL2010Q. It is my baby. I love this machine so much. Uh, the other one I have is a Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. Um, it's, a, it's a good machine as well. Um, but I just, I love my, my Juki. I just, I'm in love with it. And um, I am snipping on my threads as I go this time, you guys. You should be so stinking proud of me. The person that taught me to sew never snipped their threads, therefore I never snipped mine. <laughs> and uh, a bad habit to get into. Okay, what I'm fixing to show you is a little screwy. So I'm going to zoom in as much as I possibly can to show you. And I've already done it on this one but I'll show you again what I've done. All right, so you fold it in half and line it up really well. Either use your um, ruler or you can use this mat. This mat is done in, in inches. I love these things. These are This is a square inch, easy peasy. So you're gonna go up one inch, make a mark, okay? You're gonna go over two inches and make a mark. And then you're gonna sew from here to here. Now, if you've not made as many of these as I have, get your ruler out, all right? And we're gonna go from there. So you're gonna do it on all four sides, fold it over again, line it back up, go over one, I'm sorry, go up one, over two. Okay, up one, over two. And you're gonna do that on both. Now, if I went too fast, which is entirely possible, feel free to rewind and start watch it again. I'm gonna do it again on this one to show you, because you're gonna do it on both pieces, 
okay? Get it to where you can see. Up one inch, over two. One, up one, over two. Up one, oh, let me get this back in view for you. Up one, over two. And now we're gonna sew, all right? So let's bring this back. And let's sew these across. Now on this one, you are gonna want a double stitch, a double um, back stitch. I'm sorry guys, I didn't put you guys in frame for that. I'm sorry. It's a good thing I have three more to do to show you. So once you've sewn these, and here's my line. I've sewn from here to here. You're gonna lop it off. About half an inch to a quarter inch away. Do not so do not cut through your threads through your stitches, okay? And don't cut it so close that it's going to come apart. All right, so let's do this for the rest of them. Now, after you do your first ones, your pleats, it's going to get kind of funky. You're not going to be able to fold it in half as easily as this is, because these pleats are going to pull up and make it a little bit more difficult on you. Oops, guys, got a string. Cut it off, cut it off. All right, so it's folded in half. Now I'm super careful. Um, I believe if you're gonna do it, do it correctly. So I always put a little clip, just to hold it tight. Hi, Gypsy. Put a little clip, match up your corners, put a little clip, and we're gonna sew away again. Back stitch. Flip it around, do it again. Plop them off again, half an inch to a quarter inch away. Don't cut it so close that it's gonna come apart and don't snip through your stitches because that creates one heck of a mess. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it already creates a little area where you can put a bowl, boom, right here. Okay, so let's do this the second one. Okay, let's do the second side. Or yeah, the second um, piece of fabric. Side to stitch, uh, mark to mark, back stitch. Lop it off again, quarter inch to half inch away. Don't snip through your thread, your stitches. I'm gonna say that every single time because I've done it more than once and it just is so frustrating. Again, your pleats are gonna make it a little wonky. Line up your edges, put a pin or a clip. I like the clips a lot for this, they're just easier. Um, some extra fabric there. Do another clip. And so these last last two, okay guys? Last two, last two. Back stitch. Back stitch again. Flip it over. Last one, guys. Back stitch. Back stitch. Lop them off, or cut them off, I guess I should say. A lot of people don't know what lop it means. Lop it off means to cut it off. I don't know if that's a southern thing or if it's the house I grew up in thing. My grandmother, my mom's mom, we used to, we called her Grammy. She used to use that phrase. So now you've got two. You're gonna take one, turn it inside out, and you're gonna do these to where pretty sides match, right sides match. Cut off your threads if you have any extras hanging out. 
Now what I do on this, because this is wonky, you guys. This one is a little wonky. You wanna match up your corners first. And it's okay to do it like this at first, okay? Because that's what you're gonna have to do to get them to match because these little pleats make it super difficult and <laughs> they went a clip and super wonky. So line it up. I'm cutting off my extra fabric, guys. Okay, line it up, clip it. Last corner here to line up and clip it. Now I go in and do the pleats because you want the pleats to line up too. And these are a little difficult, I'm not gonna lie to you. They are a little wonky. They take a little bit of extra oomph. This is not a beginning sewer, like a beginner sewers um, friendly. This takes a little bit of practice. I tried to do it as a beginning sewer and I was so frustrated I didn't do another one for a year, year and a half. But now that I've got it down, I don't mind. All right, so all my pleats now, I'm doing this out of camera view, guys. I am so sorry. So you're gonna see my pleats are matched up. Let's let it focus. There we go, it's trying so hard. Anyways, you can see corner, pleat, corner. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave room from here from here to here. You wanna do a little bit here and a little bit here um, sewing wise because you want to, it's very difficult if you don't do a whole thing to get this to fold up correctly when we are going into doing a top stitch. So I do about half an inch here and half an inch here and I backspace, backspace, sorry guys. I backstitch four times, four. Now I know that's probably a little bit of a overkill but when I'm pulling it out, I tug a lot, and um, I'm afraid, always afraid that it's gonna rip apart, which it probably will if you're not super careful with this. Um, this this project requires a bit of finagling and a bit of making it work. <laughs> so. All right, you're gonna sew a quarter inch to a half an inch aside. All right, one, two, three, and four. Now, just sew around. The pleats are a little wonky, as I've said before, but just sew all the way around. You wanna make sure your stuff is even. And then back, I backstitch on every single one. I just do a normal one-time backstitch on all the corners. The only time I do the overkill is when I'm leaving that space to turn out because it's um, it's gonna get tugged on a lot, more so than a normal turnout. This, this one's a little bit of a beast, you guys. So just follow it around, do the best you can. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it probably constantly. We are not factories. We are not a machine in a factory. Um, we are uh, humans, and we just make it work the best we can. So just take your time, sew as straight as possible, and go from there. Just try your best. Try your best. Okay, now I'm coming back around to my the opening that I'm going to be leaving. One, two, three, and four. Alright, pull it open. Now, this little part that we left, let me see if I can get you guys in a little bit better here. Okay, this is the part we left open, see? And we're gonna reach in. I did not leave it open far enough. <laughs> oh well, it's just, it's not bad. It's just gonna make it a little bit more difficult. So reach in, 
and pull out and just keep pulling. You can see why I, there we go, here we go. Good job, there we go. You can see why I backstitched as much as I did. <laughs> so the good news is, is we're almost there. This is the very end piece. So go in and poke your corners out. And let me see. I always keep knitting needles or chopsticks on hand. So I'm going to go in, make sure my corners pushed out as much as possible with my fingers. And then I use my chopstick to make it pretty good. Now, be very, be careful when you're using the chopstick. Um, I wouldn't use, some people say you can use scissors. I would never use scissors because you can poke it right through very fast. Um, same thing with the chopstick. Um, it won't be very fast, but it will push it right through if you have weak seams, which is why I always double, double, I've been saying double all the time when I mean back, which is why I back stitch, which I guess it could be considered a double stitch, but get it as far out as you can with your fingers and then use that um, top stick to make it pretty. All right, now. There we go. All my corners are poked out. I go ahead and, and just kind of fluff it around. Make sure that it's nice and held together. And this is where you're gonna go iron it, okay? Iron it really well. When I iron it, I just do this. Flip it over. I, I don't ever iron the middle part in this. It's, it's just too difficult. I never iron the middle part, just, the, just these pieces, okay? Uh, be right back while I do that. All right, we are back. So let's do a top stitch all the way around, making sure we close our little hole up, okay? Let's get that top stitch going. And the top stitch you're gonna do quarter to an eighth of an inch all the way around. Um, just wanna make it pretty. And take the time while we're making it pretty to close up that seam. All right, here we go. Just do it the best you can, guys. It can be a little difficult around the pleats. Now, I am not pulling it through my machine. I'm just guiding it. I'm not pulling or pushing. I'm letting the machine and the feed dogs do all the work. Just doing a guide. And why it's giving me such a hard time. There we go. Well, maybe not. Hi. Sorry, I have to master this, guys. <laughs> all right, all the way around. There you have it, my guy, my friends. Let me pull this out some. Perfectly good, all set, bowl koozie. Put your bowl in it, carry it. And because we use the Thermaland Plus and I use 100% cotton thread and 100% cotton fabric, you can put this in the microwave, all right? And there we go, guys. All set. So, let me zoom out. You guys are so close. Hello. <laughs> All right. Much better. Much, much better. Okay. So, um, I'm getting the hang of this, guys. I promise. There we go. So, um, that's how you do that. Sorry it's a little bit longer of a uh, video, but it is a tutorial. 
Um, so if you guys have any questions or any comments, anything like that, if I can help at all, leave a comment below. I love getting comments. I love commenting back. I love helping. Um, I love to read them. It's just so much fun to have compl com compliments. I did not mean compliments. I meant comments. I'm not asking for compliments. You guys, please understand that. So anyways, have a bowl cozy. Make them cute. Make the I use, of course, Star Wars, of course, Disney. I often do college print, uh, sports print, anything like that that we can find. But yeah, just really cute. All right, guys. I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, give me a thumbs up. Hit that little subscribe button right there. Hit the little bell. Let you know every time I upload a new video. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks, guys, so much. Bye.